In this DIY December episode, I'll be showing you how to make these fun, stackable hammered rings. We are going to need about 6 inches of 16 gauge sterling silver wire. If you want to use copper or brass, any solid metal will work. We're going to need a steel ring mandrel. So it helps if you have the sizes of the rings marked on. The next necessary tool is a chasing hammer. So we have the ball peen side here and then the chasing hammer side here. Now you're also going to need a mat or a soft surface to work on like this here. Um, I'm just using a bead mat. If you have a bench pillow that will work perfectly fine. And then I have a wire cutter. Now the specific type of wire cutter that I'm using is called a memory wire cutter. So a side cutter will work but I'm going to show you a cool trick. Um, the memory wire cutter works really well for cutting uh, a really flush cut on the heavier gauges of wire. So see here on the end of my 2 inch piece of sterling 16 gauge wire, we have the opposite end of what was cut with a side cutter. So see how it's pointy? What I'm going to do is take my side cutter here and trim that little guy off and I'll show you how perfectly uniform and beautiful the cut is. See how awesome that is? And if I um, were able to find my little cut piece that came off, it would have that exact same beautiful sharp cut. So this works really great when you're working with precious metals because there is no waste that way. So that's my little tip. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, figure out your ring size. Um, I wear about a size 6 ring, so I cut 2 inches of wire. If you're bigger or smaller than that, just kind of go up and down um, from that. Now this ring does not go all the way around, so that way you can wear it higher on your finger or lower, um, and you can stack them wherever you'd like. So we're going to start out by bending the wire around um, right between the 3 and the 4 on the ring mandrel. And so we're going to have a tough time getting those ends down, but that's okay because that's where the pad comes in. So we are going to place that down and see if I can focus. Awesome. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this chasing side of the chasing hammer and we're going to hammer those ends down into a round shape. Okay, so now once we have a fairly round shape, it's okay if it's not all the way down. We just kind of want it to be kind of as round as we can get it. What we're going to do is we're going to tilt the ring a little bit and kind of just whack and move and whack and move. And we can do kind of hard wax or kind of really soft wax. It doesn't really matter. Ooh, the banging on the table is moving the camera a little bit. Um, but as, as we go around the ring, you'll start to see this beautiful kind of almost diamond cut look to the wire. So I'm going to do that on one side, then I'm going to do the other side, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have hammered on both sides, and we have this awesome, really reflective look. Now, you can see that the ring has kind of become misshapen. So now what we're going to do is put it back on the mandrel and concentrate on shaping and sizing it. And pay close attention to the ends so that they get hammered and they are not rough. Um, then we're going to go back in with a file if that's necessary to file them down so they're comfortable. Okay, so now we have this beautiful, perfect circle with paddle edges that we'll just need to file down a little bit. So if you're having trouble sizing it, if it wants to kind of fall down past the six, make sure to kind of <clears throat> bring it back up on the mandrel and kind of shape it and push it down and then hammer it back into shape and it'll fall right down at the six. So I'll show you one more style for the ring um, that I think is pretty cool. So I have another two inch piece of round wire here um, and it has those perfectly cut flush ends to the wire thanks to the memory wire cutter. Now what I'm going to do is use the ball peen side of the hammer to get a more kind of smaller dimpled hammered look. So I'm going to do the same basic steps 
I'm going to wrap the wire around the top of the mandrel to get that basic round shape. And again, I'm going to use the chasing side of the hammer to hammer those ends down. And you want the hammer to bounce. You don't want to do a dead whack like this. You want it to bounce up and down. So when we hammer down, the wire wants to spread a little bit. And so it's very easy to just use your fingers here to push the wire back into place. Focus in a little bit more. There we go. We're also using the chasing side of the hammer to kind of paddle those edges a little bit so they're more comfortable on the skin and that way we don't have to file as much. So we're already to about the six so what I'm going to do is shape it so that it's just a little bit smaller because when we hammer it's going to elongate the wire. And it's okay if those edges overlap at first. That's totally fine. We will definitely straighten it out later. Okay, so now what we're going to do is use the ball peen side of the hammer. If you're new to hammering, maybe do a once over with the chasing side and that way you'll have a flatter surface to get the smaller dimples on. Um, it'll be much easier for you um, and much quicker for you if you are new. So what I do is I like to keep it pretty tight on the mandrel whenever I'm using the peen side of the hammer. And I'm just going to very lightly go over the wire. Now, while, while I'm doing this, I'm kind of squeezing the wire back into shape as I'm hammering. And remember, let it bounce. Don't whack it down like this. We want to have it bouncing. You want to hear that ringing noise. And so as you can see, it's already stretching out a little bit. So I'm going to place it higher up on the mandrel, sque squeeze it down back into shape. And like I said, it's okay if they overlap. And go back in. And you can kind of tilt the ring back and forth to make sure you're getting the sides. really don't shy away from those ends at all. Okay, so it will be a little misshapen, but I want to show you the texture that we're getting. See how we have those tinier little wax from the hammer? So it's going to be even more shimmery than the first two that we've created. So what we can do then is put it back on the mandrel, reshape, resize, and i got to find my numbers here. Okay, so we're a little bit past the six. No big deal here. So we'll just bring it back up, kind of push down to shape it and size it. And then we're about at the five. That's great. Okay, so now we're going to jump almost one whole size really back down to the six when we hammer to shape it. Great, and then really work down those ends. So, oh, a little bit too much. <laughs> So maybe let's bring that back up higher. And it's okay if you're using a dead soft wire. In fact, I prefer it because then you still have a little bit of malleability for sizing, especially when you are giving this as a gift. Okay, back down to the five. So now we're going to be real gentle when we hammer it around. And remember to kind of gradually bring that wire down. And we are right at the six. Perfect. So it's a perfect circle. If only our fingers were perfect circles, right? So that is what we look like. Now we're just going to do a little bit of edge filing on these ends right here. 
Um, you just want to round it out. If you have a cup burr, that'll work just fine. Otherwise, use whatever file you feel is necessary. And make a ton more. If you have patterned hammers, those will work just fine. Um, but isn't this a fun little stack of rings here? If I can get it to focus. Aren't those beautiful? So you can oxidize them if you wish. I think that's what I'm going to do with mine, and I'll show you the finished result. So I just want to show you I've oxidized my ring, and I'm going to take a cup burr here. And this is just a finishing step. This is basically, let's see if it'll show here. It's so tiny, I don't know that it'll show. Here we go. You can see that there's little blades on the inside of the cup. Basically what we're going to do is twist those blades over the ends of the wire, just like this. And that's going to eat away at any sharp edges that are left after we have um, cut and then paddled the ends of the wire. So you just twist back and forth and it's creating a more round surface. Then you can go in and file if necessary. So just kind of work at the ends. If you don't have a cup or a regular old fashioned file or even sandpaper will do. But you can see um, with me having oxidized it first, if it'll focus here. There we go, you can see how it's really eating away at those edges and revealing the bright silver underneath. So I will continue to do that and get back to you with a finished result after polishing. So here is the finished result after polishing. You can wear them overlapped like this, in a line like this, and of course mixed with other rings. So thanks for watching this DIY December episode. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more. And have fun creating.